Liverpool decided pretty early on in this transfer window that they would be waiting until 2023 before they made a major midfield addition. Like virtually every other elite club, they want to sign Jude Bellingham but they know that Borussia Dortmund won't let him leave this summer. So in that instance, they have chosen to be patient and that's understandable. After all, Bellingham is potentially a once in a generation talent, the midfield answer to Virgil van Dijk and Alisson. Liverpool had earlier opportunities to make marquee centre-back and goalkeeper signings, but they waited, and the risk paid off without a doubt. The Reds also hoped to sign Orlean Chouameni from Monaco, but instead he chose to join Real Madrid. Liverpool have not pursued any alternative because clearly they don't believe that there's another suitable player of that profile, a young, athletic midfielder who can play as a number 6 or a number 8 at the right price. Many supporters have disputed that stance, picking out a number of candidates whom they believe tick the requisite boxes. Some of those are covered here, but it seems Liverpool's shortlists are exceedingly small. They are going in search of players they regard as virtually perfect, players who are seen to offer guarantees, and that drastically narrows the pool of options. But what the club must understand is that those guarantees don't really exist, and three of their former deals prove it. First, there's Thiago. Liverpool paid 25 million postling to sign him from Bayern Munich, where he had already established himself as a superstar. And when he's on the pitch, he almost always delivers elevating the side to another level as the club would have hoped. But the problem is that around half the time, he isn't on the pitch. In fact, Thiago has started 37 Premier League games from a possible 75 since he joined, a rate of just 49.3%. And then, there's a double deal from 2017. Alex Oxlade Chamberlain for 35 million porcelain and Nabi Keita for an even 12 53 million porcelain. Like Thiago, both of those players have been doped by fitness issues. Keita has missed 53 games since he joined, while Oxlade Chamberlain has been sidelined for 77. But unlike the Spaniard, they are inconsistent when they do play. Keita has been better than Oxlade Chamberlain. The club have made that clear by trying to extend his contract, while the Eclipse man is allowed to run down. And he has had good spells in the side, not least in the second half of the last season. But he's also the fourth most expensive signing in the club's history. A player Jurgen Klopp was so desperate to bring in that Liverpool agreed a deal a year in advance after prolonged frustration. The reality is that when available, he simply hasn't lived up to that lofty billing. He was supposed to take the Premier League by storm, but it seems those expectations were misguided. That's precisely the problem, you can never know, but Liverpool don't seem to have taken this 3 pronged 113 million porcelain lesson on board. Keita has yet to sign a new deal, potentially because he'd like to play more often, yet that request is laden with irony because he's so often out of action. Some would argue that the sale in the final week of the window is the best outcome at this point in that it would effectively force Liverpool into the market for a player who would likely be available a whole lot more. But even then, there is a degree of risk inherent in any transfer, even those that excite Liverpool most. Ultimately, it's a gamble worth taking at this moment in time because the risk of failing to act appears far greater following the dismal opening three games of the new season, with the Bournemouth match hopefully, but not necessarily given their limitation a turning point.